Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel this week. First off, I'd like to say thanks for the kind comments and the support from the last two videos. It really does mean a lot to me. My goal was to help anyone who's interested in this plane on how to fly it, and I believe right now we've been accomplishing that goal so far, so I'm happy with this. Anyways, welcome back to the ERJ-170-175 pilot series. For anyone new to the series that has an interest in this aircraft, I highly recommend you check out episode 1, linked in the description below. To recap the series so far though, we've now accomplished our pre-flight and safety checks, and last week we completed that long originating receiving flow and checklist. So with that said, welcome to episode 3 this week, which in my opinion is one of the more fun ones today. Today we'll be continuing where we left off in last week's video and be covering a few small items while the passengers board the aircraft today. We'll be covering captain and first officer duties during boarding, and then programming our MCDU finally. To quickly summarize, we're still in Chicago O'Hare here at Gate Lima 20, now with about uh, 45 minutes until departure time. All of the switches and knobs are currently set in the correct position thanks to the originating receiving flow we did last week. And now with that said, let's head back into the cockpit and continue on with episode 3. So, now that we're back in the cockpit with the originating receiving uh, checklist and flow done, this is generally where we'll let the flight attendants know that boarding can begin. Now, for the size of our aircraft, though, and that the weather is looking great, the gate agents will most likely begin the boarding about 25 minutes prior to departure. But that can change if weather isn't looking great, and we may need to try and leave early to get out before the weather hits. So now, let's quickly look at the captain's responsibilities during boarding. During boarding, it is the captain's responsibility to review the release for the flight and make sure he has all the information that will be pertinent to the flight today. Now, we're going to go ahead and be covering the release on next week's video and kind of show you what the captain's looking for when going over that release, as this video is just going to solely focus on programming the MCDU. The first officer's responsibility during boarding now is to begin programming our MCDU. The first officer is usually responsible for this since like I just said the captain will be busy looking over the entire release for the flight. He won't really have time to program the MCDU. Now there are multiple ways to program the MCDU but I'm going to show you today what I think is the most efficient way to me at least. Now for a quick note since this is not a real plane some items will not be modeled on the MCDU like the data link function uh, which is just our way to communicate with dispatch get digital ATIS sign the fit for duty, and then get takeoff and landing numbers. Also not functionable is the route page, where we usually will put our originating airport, destination airport, alternate airport, and then our own flight number, uh, which you kind of saw in the originating receiving flow video last week. I put that in the flight plan page. So we'll have to do some workarounds to get this as accurate as we possibly can, but we'll make do with it. And then we'll also have to look at field air ERJ's 170-175 uh, manual today for our takeoff numbers. Now with that said, let's look down at the MCDU here and get programming. So, very quickly before we begin programming the MCDU, I feel like it would be beneficial here if we went through these uh, line functions here very quickly. So starting with the uh, performance page here, this will bring us up to our performance index. And what it's going to do is allow us to select from a variety of functions to change the performance uh, parameters of our aircraft here. Looking over at the nav index page now, same thing, variety of functions uh, that have to do with navigational uh, functions for the plane. We have a previous and uh, next page function here. So this just allows us to swap pages. So it shows page one of two, we can hit next, page two of two, previous, go back. Flight plan page, when looking back at last week's video, uh, we already have an active flight plan in there for O'Hare to Houston here when we put it in for the originating receiving on the FO side. So this just allows us to see the entire flight plan from point A to point B. So we have nothing in there right now because we haven't programmed it yet. Progress page here will show the progress of the flight. You know, time and distance to the next uh, fix with fuel. And I'll show that as we program this as well. Route function will typically show the flight plan page but in a order let read from left to right instead of a list here but it's not functioning in the field air aircraft so we won't be able to look at that circuit breaker panel right here uh, shows any circuit breaker panel circuit breakers that might be popped 
again it's not functionable so we won't be able to look at that our menu page uh, this allows us to adjust things on the uh, PFD and everything so we can go to you know menu here look at our setup and we can change the wind vectors from like vector to uh, XY here if we wanted to and then auto land off or on in real life our planes don't have auto land so that would be off and then uh, this just allows if you want to use system A or system B which it rotates on its own and everything so we don't need to mess with this at all data link page here that's also uh, not accessible in this model but it just allows you to talk uh, basically do your uh, dispatch grab weather and send for takeoff numbers and landing numbers so we'll be unable to do that in uh, this MCDU so we'll have to look at the uh, field airs uh, pamphlet or uh, instruction booklet there we go that will uh, sh give us our takeoff and landing numbers again that next function and then our thrust rating select this allows us to change uh, our thrust rating from either like climb one which is a higher N1 percentage to either climb two so we're not using those engines as much on takeoff there and then our radio page so this just allows us to change frequencies uh, without the knob here we can just go ahead and type in let's just say 228 we'll just type in 228 put in line one and boom 228 is now the active frequency in COM1 so that's the basic functions of here now that we got that uh, understood we can go ahead and begin programming this flight okay now typically the first thing I like to do when programming the flight is go to the nav page here and we're gonna go ahead and select departure now since we're departing O'Hare, it's going to tell us, you know, hey, here's all the runways selected uh, that you have to choose from. Which runway are you going to want to take off from today? Well, for our purposes today, we're going to go ahead and be taking off from 2-2 left here. So we'll just select 2-2 left on line select 2 there, and then we'll go ahead and insert that. Now it's showing our origin is of runway 2-2 left at O'Hare to Houston. So we'll go ahead and activate that. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and look at our uh, release here that shows our filed route by the company that can be found on page one in the release. So looking at that route now, I'll just go ahead and have uh, plaster it up on the screen somewhere. Uh, our first fix is going to be bacon here. So we're going to type in B-A-C-E-N and we're going to go ahead and put that in the via two function here. So left line select key two. So now we got runway 22 left O'Hare, direct to Bacon. And we're going to go ahead and do it for the next fix of Bloker here. So B L O K R. Do it now again in line three. And so on. So we're just going to keep adding these fixes until we get them all the way to our uh, rival for Houston. So there's Becky. And now since we have a uh, VLR here, nothing changes. We're just going to go F A M and put that in and now it automatically brings us to the next page of page two of three I didn't have to hit next or anything it just ran out of space so it says okay we're going to page two now that we're looking at a jetway here if we were just to try and put a jetway in on its own jetway 137 it's gonna give us an error it's gonna be like that waypoint doesn't exist and that's because it needs a fix to fly to so on this jetway we need to put in the ending fix for it. jetway to little rock here so jetway 137 dot to little rock lit we'll be able to put that in now and it takes all of the fixes from the jetway all the way to little rock on there for us okay so now we'll go ahead and set jetway 180 to swb and now we have those next fixes so now what's next is we'll go ahead and activate this flight plan. So we'll tell the computer, yup, this is the flight plan we want. And these are all of our fixes. So now that you see that we have an arrival, we'll go back to our nav page here. And we're going to the bottom right six key here. And we're going to, change, we're going to put in our star now to the Doobie 2 SWB transition. We'll go ahead and insert that. And now this is just a modification flight plan. So before we do anything else, we can preview what's changed before we activate it so the plane just doesn't start flying to the wrong fix here. So we'll look at it and we'll see Doobie to the SWB. So there we go. We like that. 
and then it takes us all the way to Houston until we have to choose a runway. So we can go ahead and activate that. Now, since we're on this page, well, we can go to page 5, 6, 4, 6. The next thing I like to do is go to our perf initialization page now, since it's right here for us to click. We'll go here. And now this is going to allow us to change our climb performances, cruise speeds, and then descent numbers here. So looking at our originating, or looking at our, our release again here, first thing we're going to want to do is change our climb speed to 250 knots slash 0.74. So we just got to change it to 250. And we do this because at the O'Hare 6 departure out of Chicago, they want us to climb and get out of their airspace right away. Uh, so they want us to altitude so they can get all the arrival planes in. So they want us to climb slower so we can climb higher quicker. That makes sense. Cruise now, uh, looking at the release page, our dispatcher has us planned for Mach 0.78 on page 3 here. So we'll go ahead and put in 0.78 and we'll select that for the cruise speed. Descent now, we'll go ahead and keep the same here. That's also found on page 3, so we'll keep 290 knots in the descent, 0.78 Mach, and then a 3 degree uh, descent slope all the way down. Now, if we wanted to, we could change that to uh, slash, you know, 2.5, so we'd begin a descent. Whoops. Uh, so we'd begin a descent farther out there. Um, but for the most part, unless you have a really strong tailwind, you can always keep that uh, at uh, point 3.0. Departure slash approach speeds now. Uh, we can change, you know, when uh, we want our plane to allow us to go faster than 200 knots. So right now it's limiting it to 200 knots until we either get to 2,500 feet AGL or four nautical miles. So what we usually do is we'll set that to 210 and then keep it going to uh, 3,000 feet and six nautical miles so we don't do any damage to the flaps or bust the uh, delta uh, speed restriction. We'll click next page now. And now we're looking at our performance initials page for fuel here. So looking at our fuel, whoops, sorry about that. As of right now, we're looking at a fuel reserve of 2,095 pounds, which can be found on page three of the release, which gives us about 45 minutes of fuel. So 2,095 pounds, we'll go ahead and put that in. Our takeoff right now, they said we only need 360 pounds of fuel to taxi to the runway and we'll land with, you know, be able to taxi in with 200 pounds. Now, some people say you could put zero in there because it doesn't really matter with how much fuel you land with because if worse comes to worse, you can just be taxied into the gate. But we always just put in slash 200. And then this number can always change depending on the airport you're in. So if you're at Atlanta and it might take like a 30-minute taxi, it might be 800 pounds to taxi. Uh, but since it's relatively dead in Chicago right now, all we need is 360 pounds to go to the uh, runway right behind us. And then our dispatcher planned us to have some extra fuel here uh, to hold and everything with an extra 1,387 pounds extra. So that gives us about an extra 20 minutes uh, to hold, do anything we might need to do, go a little faster if we wanted to. Looking at the next page now. This is our all of our altitudes now. So what we're going to do here is set our cruising altitude first. And that can be found on page one of the release that we have at flight level 300. Zero, zero. So 30,000 feet, we're going to set that as our initial cruise altitude. We'll be able to click that again, auto populates, and we'll be able to set that to at altitude here. Otherwise, once we put in the winds, we'll have to re-put in 30,000 again. And this just saves you some finger clicking. So the winds now are going to be 239 at 42 knots at 30,000 feet, which is also on the release, with a ISA deviation of 6 degrees. So now we have basically programmed, to be honest, our entire MCDU for our flight, flight plan here, as you can see, and then our performance page. So now we've told the plane, hey, these are the numbers we want you to fly. This is the fuel. So you can accurately calculate this. Here's our cruising altitude where you want to level off for the VNAV and everything. So 
it's pretty happy with that. Looking at our flight plan page here now, it shows like 2-2 left to Bacon will be a 190 heading. About 34.8 nautical miles to get there with uh, 7 minutes in time and so on. You can kind of decode that as yourself. Looking at our progress page now, it shows us, you know, to the next fix or to the fix that we're supposed to be going to, the fix after that, and then our destination. So it's 842 nautical miles, which we're going to go ahead and check that matches our release. And then the, dis uh, the time and route is 2 hours and 48 minutes all the way there. The fuel part isn't ca uh, calculated yet uh, because we haven't uh, loaded up our fuel or done any of our actual uh, numbers yet that is about to come up. Looking back at the route page here, or the progress page here, we'll look at the next. So you can see as we are flying in the air, this will populate. And then this will also populate as we're flying with the wind. It'll tell you if you're drifting, how far off course, and everything. And the current wind's at altitude. So now, since we've gotten to this step, we can go ahead and look at the numbers in the manual here to get our zero fuel weight. Like I said, normally we would send this off via data link. And it would send us back a zero fuel weight with all of our takeoff speeds and pitch trim numbers, etc. And this isn't going to be the current fuel. We're still in the process of getting fueled. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that manual here now very quick. Okay, so I have here now the manual for the E-Jets here. And I've gone ahead already and scrolled down to uh, page 81 uh, for the 175 takeoff B speeds. And from here, we're gonna just going to go ahead and find our weight to be able to find our V speeds all the way to our acceleration speed. But we have to be careful when looking at these charts as they are all labeled differently. So right now we're on the right plane, the 175, but it's for a flaps one, takeoff mode one. And today we're gonna to be doing a flaps two, takeoff two, because we don't need uh, to have our engines at max power throughout the takeoff. Uh, so we'll go ahead and scroll down here until we find a flaps two, takeoff mode two. So there's, you know, flaps four, takeoff one, flaps one, takeoff two, flaps two, takeoff two. So this is the one we're looking for right here. So when we're in this chart now, all we're gonna do is look for our ramp weight or our aircraft weight here right now. And right now we are sitting at 79,397 uh, 397 pounds. So this one we'd be looking at right here, the 79,400 pounds. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is write down our V speeds for the current temperature outside so we'll go ahead and be using the uh, 139, 145, 148 because we are right near sea level, about 600 feet or so off the ground. And uh, the temperature is in between negative 40 to uh, about 37 degrees it's in between. So we'll be able to use the 139, 145, and 148. So once we get that written down here very quick, we're going to go ahead and go back into the MCDU. Okay, now that we're back in the plane here and able to look at our MCDU again, we can go ahead and put in our zero fuel weight that we got from Simbrief, uh, that I got at least. And then uh, it'll put in our gross weight and everything. But now while we were looking at those numbers, the fuel truck came and uh, gave us 13,000 pounds of gas here, so we are good on the gas side now. So what we're going to go ahead and do is put in our zero fuel weight of 66,395 pounds. Gives us a gross weight of 79,390, and what we looked at was 397, so 7 pounds off. Uh, so we'll go ahead and confirm that initialization by push, pushing the bottom uh, right 6 key. And this is going to go ahead and load up our performance data page here. So we have a cru we're cruising at 30,000 feet with a max altitude of 35.4. No step. Estimated time in route will be 2 hours and 6 minutes with a dis uh, distance of 841.5 nautical miles. It says it requires us to have 10,000 pounds of fuel uh, for the flight, and we'll be landing with 3,000 pounds remaining and 69.4 gross weight. So everything we looked at there pretty much matches what we had planned. So now we can go ahead and go to our next page and kind of just look at the winds to make sure it's all the same. So 239 at 42 gives us an average wind of a headwind of about 36 knots. Again, pre-flight planning says we have 3.0 thousand pounds of gas remaining when we get there. And then our reserve at destination will be 2,095. 
So now we'll go ahead and go back to our takeoff page here. And now it's just summarizing, you know, taking off runway 22 left at O'Hare. It's 8,075 feet. Temperature outside is 14 degrees Celsius. So that, remember if we, when we looked at that chart, that number was well within negative uh, 40 to negative uh, to 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, we'll go ahead. This isn't really required to put in the wind. If you want to, you can. Uh, the wind is calm, so we can just go ahead and leave that as is. Pressure altitude and then the altimeter setting with the elevation of 654 feet. Okay, looking at the next page now. Shows us our headwind crosswind component. Again, the winds are calm, so we have none with the density altitude. Standard day, not much of a density altitude out there. And now this is where we're going to go ahead and put on our V speeds uh, for a plane to take off with. So we have them written down here. V1 was 139. V2 was 148, rotate was 145, and then our acceleration speed here was 198 knots. From here we can now go to the TRS page here, set our takeoff data set, and now this is where we can go ahead and change all of our takeoff numbers. So. We want the takeoff mode 2 like that we planned for. Then we're going to go ahead and have our ECS on. Anti-ice will be set to off. Uh, flex takeoff, it doesn't program it, but if you want to do a flex takeoff, you just turn that on and it'll, we can go ahead and adjust what we want our engines uh, to perform at. So we can think it's, you know, Normally around 40 degrees Celsius we'll have it set, so we can go ahead and leave it there. And then we can adjust the temperature outside to what it was of 14 degrees Celsius. We'll hit enter. And now we have fully configured our MCDU here for takeoff. So everything is set up now. We have the entire route plugged in. We have all of our numbers and the fuel now programmed so it all looks good gives us our progress page now as you can see everything is set and running and that is about it when programming this mcdu it's not very hard it's just a little tedious since we have to go look at the uh, manual for the takeoff numbers unlike real world where it just gets you you just plug in the runway and then it just sends you all them right here. Alrighty, so that will go ahead and finish up episode 3 this week of programming the MCDU. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I made it as easy as I possibly could with programming the flight. The MCDU can do a lot when used properly, but we'd be here for two hours if I tried to teach you every little thing it can do. So, my advice to you is to go ahead and take a look at the perf index and nav index pages yourself in the simulator and play around with them and see what each function allows you to do. So tune in next week as we go over what's covered in the release and doing our before start flow and checklist. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week.